What's up, YouTube? <laughs> yeah, so last night I came home from, I was over at my buddy's house helping him finish some stuff up. And the water pump went out. So, gave, me, gave us a little clue, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. It wouldn't turn on and I came down and I tapped it with a wrench and it took off and it's worked for another couple weeks. And last night it gave up the goat, so we would ran out of water and we refilled and then turned the pump on and nothing happened. So anyhow, with a little bit of research on these pumps, I found there's a micro switch at the bottom of them on the pre The pressure switch is actually a, a diaphragm that goes to a little micro switch. And it appears though I can get that micro switch for $3. <laughs> So I basically went and bought another pump and I'm swapping it out now. And uh, I put the little connectors on it. So it's an easy swap out. I knew that this water pump was gonna be something we would have to service. So I would tell you if you're, if you're doing this, make your water pump so you can get to it easily so that you can take it out to replace it or to repair it. But anyhow. Luckily, I did that with a simple mounting plate, and uh, all I had to do is just crimp the new connectors onto these wires, and now I can just plug them into the other wires and put in four bolts and hook up two hoses, and we'll be back in business. And then I'm going to take the one that I removed, and I'm gonna get that micro switch and replace it so I'll show you that as I do it. I'll take it apart and show you where that micro switch is. And uh, hopefully I can get one on Amazon. I'll replace that micro switch. And then when this happens at 930 at night again, I can come out and take out four bolts, unhook two hoses and plug it back in. And we'll be taking a shower instead of a sponge bath. <laughs> so anyhow, that's what's happening here this morning. Just did a whole segment, but the thing wasn't turned on. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's the uh, mounting plate, and there's the wires where I can plug it in, and it hooks up to that hose, and the other one's tucked up here, because it's got water in it, so I'll get the pump mounted and get that end hooked up and get it plugged in, and then drop this hose down with the bucket underneath it to catch the slop, and uh, we should be back in business, and so then we can wash the dishes this morning. Okay, so the other thing that happened is when these things happen late in the evening, I was, I you know, I checked the fuse. I checked the fuse in the fuse box. The fuse was good. I came down here and tapped on that. That didn't work. Well, then I thought maybe this accumulator tank was out of whack and it was keeping the switch from working, so I actually depressurized this accumulator tank. So it's no big deal. I just have to recharge it. That's some go go juice, huh? Well, it puts the. Uh, oh, wow, that was pretty close, guys. Wow. We want this at about 30 pounds. Okay, so that's recharged. Now, I got the pump remounted up in here. It's a little bit of a reach for me, but uh, it's not really a reach, it's just awkward to... So all I gotta do is plug in these spade connectors. Uh, that should be re-energized now. And here's the kicker one is this guy here yeah, he's off the bottom of the tank so the other thing with my system whenever there's a problem with the pump the first thing I do is turn off the water heater so I turn off the pump but turn off the water heater too you should be able to go turn on the pump switch and power it up uh, open up a cold water faucet Okay, I'll go do that. Go try it. Okay, we're here in the bus. Power switch is back here in the bathroom. 
right there. Ooh, I heard noise in the bottom. And let's turn on the faucet. And we have water! Okay, so the other thing that we want to do is turn on the hot water and read out the hot water tank um, before we turn that on. We basically just want to let that run until it comes out in a steady stream, which didn't take very long. So we have water now. I can wash my dishes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the hot water heater now which is right here beside the pump. And we'll get some hot water going. Okay, so it's all reinstalled. That's, if you don't have an accumulator tank, you should check that out. It really makes the thing a lot smoother. Got a pre-strainer, the pump, uh, flexible hoses. It's pretty much, with all the info that I've been able to acquire, a pretty proper installation. So now I'm gonna take this old pump and right in here is where that pressure switch is. It's right there. I'm gonna take this apart, order that part off of Amazon, and uh, I'll show you that. Well, I'll do that. When it comes in? When it comes in, and we'll, we'll finish this video till then so it's all in one video. That's gonna be awesome, and then, Shelly's we'll gonna like this part. We'll have a spare part. Huh? We'll spare. have a spare pump, but I'll just keep this box. And I kept the little protective caps, and this guy will just go oh, sweet. back in here. <laughs> and once it's repaired, it'll be stored in here. And she can... Okay, guys, I'm gonna see if I can tear into this pump and get to that micro switch. But first off, I'm going to reinforce this box since it's going to kind of be a permanent uh, storage thing for this pump that we're going to pack it around with this. Alright, I think that'll help keep that all held together. info that I don't need. Two extra hose thingies. Those will stay on there. They won't really hurt nothing. Can you bring me that uh, work mat so I don't scar up the table? Please. This thing is super cool. It's got the, you know, it's a cutting mat on one side. So when I'm doing my work stuff up here, I work on the back side of it. I need to just get this thing off. Funny thing about this is when this thing went out in the winter up on the up on the river, we thought we froze it. But now, piecing all the clues together, it's kind of obvious to me. Because when I got home, I tested it, and I came to the conclusion this switch wasn't working. But I asked at the RV place, and they told me, no, you can't get that switch. You have to just buy a whole new pump. So that's what I ended up doing. So yeah, there's the diaphragm right there. When the pressure builds up, that pushes out and pushes on this. Yeah, and you can hear that click on the inside. So this thing should come apart. Oh, there's two snaps right there. There we go, yeah, that was. Okay, there you go, that thing. Wow, that's a tight spring too. So when that goes up and down, it's pushing on this switch right here with that little tongue. Yeah, so that little tongue is pushing, pushing that down right there. And this thing's what's broken. Hmm. For 
for that thing to come up out of there, this is going to have to come out. There you go. Like that. Now this should just come up out of there. There you go. So this thing is what's broken. So I'll go see if I can find this thing on Amazon. Okay, so I went and I looked that up on Amazon and I found a two pack of these for $10, the exact same switch. But I want to see why it failed. I'm thinking I'll just drill that rivet out and see if I can take this apart and see if it's see what's the matter with it. Because I got a new one coming and this one, we, I know for sure this one don't work. So. Oh, there we go. The rivet's out. Take this apart. Oh yeah. This is all, you can see the heat where the heat's been at it down here. That's pretty cool, so when that pushes down, it opens its circuit, and when that's up, the circuit closes. Just put the parts that I wanted to see onto the floor. Yeah, so this is uh, so right there is the parts that made contact. This part here went up and down and touched that one. Basically, it's just all burnt. I guess they call that it's all carboned up. So I'm pretty positive that's why it quit working. So when I get the new switch in here, I'll Put it back together and check it out hopefully that is the problem and i saved a whole bunch of money not having to buy another one of these i can just when that switch wears out which i think it's obviously going to happen in a full-time living environment like this where we're using it every day then i'll just uh, put in another switch for six bucks or yeah ten five bucks whatever and swap them out and just keep doing that. Awesome. I hope this, I hope this works out for us. <laughs> so I think this is all that stands between us and a functioning water pump. just this little micro switch and the contacts oh yeah you can totally feel the difference in that so all we got to do is be able to see what we're doing <laughs> so that little allen screw there in the middle thing that would adjust your pressure Okay, three simple screws. All right, and then remember, so that's the diaphragm that pushes down, and when it pushes down, it triggers that micro switch. Uh, so this had two little clips, and I think if you stick a screwdriver in there, they might come apart even easier. Or what I did last time was I just put the the knife in there. There we go. So we just unsnapped those two little clips. So that little thingy is for the bottom of the spring. There's that set screw coming through. So this micro switch should fit in there. Oops, with the switch up. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's on there. So now you see when 
when that goes down, it clicks that micro switch. So that pump is on until this thing pushes down and then it shuts off. So this is a normally closed switch. So when there's nothing on it, the contacts together and it'll run. When the line pressurizes and this diaphragm bulges out, it pushes down on this, opens the switch and the pump shuts off. It's super simple. stuff back in here. All right, so well that should go. That's it. And then obviously the <laughs> the bubble thingy goes up, right? And that goes right back on there like that. Kind of obvious the long screw would go over here. And these two short ones would go here and here. Okay. So when I took it apart, I tried, I went, okay, I better remember the top, the the wire from the top of the motor went to the top of the switch. There we go. And the other one was on the bottom. I don't think it matters because all that switch does is close, so it would work either way, but the power's gonna come in and go that way, or the power would come in and go that way. These two are the power, that's the ground, this is the power, so we should be able to go hook this up and it should run. So I'm gonna go hook a hose on here and put some water in a bucket and let's go test it out and see if it works. I don't know, YouTube, I've never done this before. Good to run the pump dry without water in it. I'm not su <laughs> super worried about it, but I just put some water in there. So I got my battery charger. It's just set on two amps, which is plenty to run this. There I'm hooked up to the ground cable. If I touch here, it should take off and start pumping. There you go. Now when it's pumping, if I plug it, it shuts off because the pr pressure came up. And there you go. So that's you shutting the faucet. You open the faucet. Victory, baby! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was an expensive pump. Totally, this pump is ready to go back into service. So we'll put it back in the box. Stick it back in the underbay as a spare pump now. And we've also got another switch because they came in a two pack. So they've been lasting us about eight months in full time use. So I'm super happy about this one. <laughs> Great. So I hope you can fix your water pump easy and uh, hope you have lots of love in your life and a joyful day. Thanks. Yes, people, I fixed water pump. Yes, I am the master of the water pump.